Hi, Kelly. Hello, Mike. How are you? How are you doing? I'm excellent. Thanks for asking. So what are we talking about today? So uh, we've been talking about some uh, high-level topics recently, and I wanted to dive into just some cool stuff yeah. that we think people need to know. So I figured let's talk about our favorite customizations that you can do for your boards in Azure DevOps. What do I you think? I love it. Um, I have quite a few uh, things I like to do in Azure DevOps, and I guess you have some as well, right? Especially around the boards and everything. Of course. Yeah. Um, before we get started, quick question. Why do we want to customize the boards? I think we've harped on this a few times in videos that you always want to do what works for your team. Yeah. And that means a lot of times you're not using what comes out of the box. You want to figure out what works well, what doesn't, yeah. do more things that do work, do fewer things that don't work. Yeah. And customization really helps you yep. do that. Customizations do that. One thing that is important for me, um, having some background in manufacturing, is visual management. Uh, being able to look at a board and see what see the state of our product uh, without having to drill in and try to find information, it's presented to me right up front. So, cool. Mm -hmm. Nothing is better than running your daily scrum and being able to pull up the board and know what's happening at a quick glance. Sure. Okay. So let's get started. Um, I'll take it off if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay, so my uh, top two favorite customizations on cards is really about the styling of the card. Not really a styling, but maybe some styling. And also the uh, item that is displayed on a card regarding the fields. Um, so I'll start off with these two. And so I am on right now the Hearts Unlimited team um, page again you know, we pulled this in off of uh, the uh, Azure DevOps uh, demo generator stuff and you can do you can do the same um, so the customization is really simple there's a little gear here we'll click on the gear and I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite customizations out of the box it doesn't show the ID I always like to see the ID because talking about it and there's a little button here that says field um, I actually have like three main fields I really like to see um, all the time, every time. Uh, again, this is always specified by team. But I like to know the area path. Um, that's always a helpful one. And I like to see the iteration that it's also in. And then I'm always curious as to who created the item. And the reason being is because I want to be able to go to that person to be able to ask them what it is that they may mean by something, if I'm not sure, without having to go look at the uh, item itself. Uh, and then I'm also going to check on if you want to display fields even when they are empty. So I've added those to the product backlog item. I'm going to add the same three to the bug as well as check the show ID field. So we set the area path, the iteration path, and of course created by. And then I'll check if it's. And then when I sit, save and close, you see that the board changes with all that information showing up. Very, very helpful. I have a lot more uh, usefulness out of it. And if I do change an area path for something, we'll change this guy to something different. You can see that it's now in a different, whoop, you know what I just did? I changed it to the wrong area path, which got it out of my team space. So mistake on my part, but if we do add it into a different area path, we would be able to um, see it. So that's the first customization I like. Okay, another one of my favorite things to do is to be able to color code the cards. And the color coding in the cards helps us to visualize certain things. So in this case, what I want to do is color codes based on their priority. So if we look at the card, we'll just grab one. I see that this priority is a priority one, which signifies to me it's pretty important. So let's highlight this card some way that we would know here are some items that are pretty important. So again, we go into the gear, we go into styles. Now look at the styling rules that I have, and I don't have any, so I'm gonna create a new styling rule, and I'll just title this one high priority. And I'll choose a color for this, and I'm gonna make this one, um, we'll make it an orangey color, or I guess it's peach, I don't know, orange peach. And we'll bold the title, and we'll look at the field, and the field will switch it, select as priority. And we'll say that if the priority equals a one. Now, one other thing that I'm going to do to this is I'm going to add one other field. 
that's going to be that it's in the committed state. I don't care if something's a high priority and it's in the new because we can add a lot of stuff that's high priority according high priority according to the business, but we want this stuff that's in the committed state. So we'll say state equals committed. And now anything that's in the committed state will be color coded orange or the card will be orange. So as you see in this case, I have two cards that are orange and they're high priority. There may be others in approved and new and, and done, but right now I don't want to do it. All right, I think that leads us right into one of my favorite customizations. I'm a heavy user of tags. I think that a lot of times you have uh, information that you can't necessarily capture in some of the fields that you might have and you just need to stamp a backlog item with some information. So I like to use tags and then you can further customize your boards using those tags. So I've got an item that is in my committed state. Let's say that that one is blocked, this one right here, provide tentative duration for shipping. I have information that I need to know about this one before I can actually work on it. So I'm going to add a new tag that says it's blocked. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now you'll see it shows this tag, but it's pretty light blue. It may not immediately stand out. There may be some tags that I want to draw some more attention to. So I'm going to go back into those same customizations and you're going to see this thing called tag colors. And I'm going to add a tag color and pick the one that I have. I'm going to pick blocked and I want it to really stand out so I'm going to make it this bright red. Um, you do have to worry a little bit about color overload so now we've got some bright orange and some bright red. Consider that. But now you're going to see that your attention is pretty much immediately drawn to this bright red blocked tag um, so you can help with uh, your at-a-glance views of your boards. These will also work inside of your individual sprint boards so those same tag colors will apply and that's really useful. Very cool. So we have uh, some fields that we've added. We've added some color coding styles and some tag styles. Now we're going to customize the look of the board, not the cards on the board. We're going to add what's called a swim lane as well as a couple of columns. So as you can see on this in this case, we have new, approved, committed, and done. However, I really like to expand that a little bit more and have a development column and a QA column. I'm going to leave the four that I have. Um, and then I'm going to add two new columns uh, for the development team and for the QA team. So again, it comes back into the customizations on the gear. We'll start off with the column. So I'm going to go to my committed column. I'll insert a column. It inserted it to the left. I'm just going to drag it to the right of the committed and I'll call this column development. And one thing that I really like to do with development is I like to split it into doing and done. So that way I can see what I have in the development, the developers are working on, and what they've moved over, uh, that they finished, that just means it's ready for QA. And I'll go ahead and I'm gonna add another column, and this one's gonna be called QA. And again, I'm gonna split that column. And once I do, uh, I'm gonna leave the state in, uh, I'm gonna change the state to committed for both of these. So when it's in development, the state is committed. Now, a state and a column are two different things. Sometimes they map right up, uh, but other times the state of a work item may be different than the column name. So I'll do, I'm gonna leave those there. One thing for these columns I'm gonna do is two more things for the columns, is to put in the definition of done. So I'm gonna add the definition of done for the development team. So I have some text I'm just gonna paste into here. And you can also do markup if you want, or mark down if you want to. And it looks like there's a little bit of a spelling error, so we'll definition. Definition of done. And then we'll save and close this. Now what we'll see here is you'll notice that I have committed, and right, right before committed, now I have development, and then Right after that, I have QA and I have doing and done. So I'll just drag this over and now I have one item in doing. When the development team finishes this work item, they can submit it, they can slide it over to done. Still stays in the committed stage uh, or in the committed stage, but now the QA team can see what work is on, on the way to be able to be tested. And the same with the QA. 
Uh, that's the columns. Now let's add a swim lane. So let's add a swim lane that is expedite. So we'll add a new sw swim lane and we'll call it expedite. And this swim lane, we're going to make sure that it's up, uh, above the default swim lane. And what this is going to do is every state for approved, committed development and QA, not the new and done, will have this new swim lane. So earlier we made two cards um, higher priority. Well, let's expedite the uh, one card and drop it into the committed um, expedite swim lane. And then you can see that this, this work item takes higher priority or precedence over everything else. Maybe there's an urgent need for this. That looks great. I like it. One cool thing as we've been going through this, um, when you make changes to the board, I can't auto refresh, but when those are already changed and I'm refreshing, like actually seeing you drag things across the board is always fun to watch. <laughs> I like that, it just magically moves. All right. So now we've got our board, I think pretty much how we like it something that might work for our team. Some customizations can be made to your actual backlog items to improve consistency. And this is one that I really like, um, especially as it applies to something like bugs. I might have a QA resource that writes amazing bug reports. And I want all of my QA people to write something in a similar manner. So I'm gonna save one of their items as a template. And then other people can apply that template and be sure to fill in the same information. Uh, so I've put in one here, uh, number 309. If we just take a look at that, that they've got you know, some quick information, expected result, actual result. They actually put in the browser information, stuff that can rarely happen sometimes in bug reports. And I want to make sure that this is done consistently. So if I just look at my actions over here and templates, I can say capture. And then I can choose which of these I actually care about. I don't really care to capture the iteration um, or the priority, but everything else, maybe not even the severity, but the repro steps, I want to keep those so people know how to fill that in. You'll notice it's HTML because um, we've got a WYSIWYG editor there. It's going to start with the same state. I want to have that system info. I don't need to capture the title. Um, but all of the information that I want here. So I'm going to save this to my team, my Parts Unlimited team, and I'm going to say that this is a, uh, a bug report template. So I'm going to save that. We'll close here. Now if I am creating a new bug, um, something bad happened. When I actually go in to edit this, I can choose templates again and I can pick bug report. And it will fill this in for me so that all I have to do is uh, change the relevant information so that I can know kind of what my template looks like so that I can keep consistency across whoever is submitting a bug report. Really helpful there. Okay. Um, one thing I actually learned recently has become one of my new favorite customizations. And it's not necessarily related to boards, but I think it fits in with process and communication with your team. And that is the information banner. So you'll see sometimes on sites that they have announcements. There's going to be an outage window or, um, you know, they want to say, hey, Mike's birthday is coming up. Let's tell people about it. Um, and we want to put that so that everyone can see it. Now this you have to use uh, the Azure CLI to do, but we can show you what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to log in to uh, my Azure site with just an AZ login here. Um, you'll see it'll just kind of pop up off to the side and, and let me log in. Um, so I will let that happen once I'm not actually going to log in. So I have one that I have uh, already uh, added in previously. We're going to be changing the URL of our uh, Azure DevOps team. So we want to let people know what this is. And you'll see a couple things in here. So we're doing this admin banner add. We're pointing it to our ADOPS site. We're saying what our message is. We're saying that the URL is changing on this date. And then I've got an expiration date. So I don't need to come in here and manage it that the date is changing on October 1st. So I'm going to go ahead and expire this message on October 1st. Um, and then I'm giving it a type warning. And you'll see what that'll look like. So I'm just going to hit enter here. 
we'll see that this will uh, take a second and it'll go out. It'll tell you that it's been successful. And now if I refresh my site, you see that I've got a nice little warning banner here saying that my URL is changing on October 1st um, so that all your users will see that. You've got some cool options there to add, remove. You can have some things in red or just informational banners. Um, and I find that uh, nice to be able to communicate with my team um, without them needing to be on a dashboard or anything like that. Those are some really cool customizations. All right. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think there's a lot you can do here. These are our favorites, the ones that we find. We apply with almost every team that we work with. So I think everyone should give them a shot, see what they like. Yep. So anyway, remember the most important thing is work with your team. It has to be something the team agrees to. Thanks for, thanks for paying attention. That's it. So just remember the board customizations should be something that the team agrees to work with. Do what works for you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Kelly. Talk to you later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions or topics that you'd like us to talk about, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.